Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. It's your boy Constant and we're back at it reviewing another professional match. Today we have a match between Uthermal and Sort of. Both of these players are high level GM players and they are both very good at their respective races. I actually had a question for you guys. For people who watch my videos if you guys would like to see me like post a video on like tips for each of the races maybe for some newcomers who don't know how to play that much I'm only in diamond but I can probably explain quite a bit because I know all the hotkeys and how to like shift control that a lot of new players don't know or I was thinking of doing like a road to masters so I could go from bronze to masters and you guys could go on the journey with me see how hard it is and how long it takes but just a couple of ideas and if you guys would like any of that please leave a comment below and tell me what you guys think anyways let's get back into the game sort of going into the hatch first pretty standard there you thermal as well going into the barracks into the reactor which is also very standard but both of these players are standard players I'd say that each of them is about top 25 in the races, maybe top 30 for sort of, but they're both still very solid, solid players. People's, oh, people always ask me like, what is the difference between high level GM and like regular GM? Because like, you'll see a difference between Maru and like Youth Thermal for say. You'll notice that they both do the same things, but Youth Thermal will probably make one or two mistakes, while Maru will play such a clean game that no mistakes are made. And he's so good at his macro play, macro play that he even if he's behind, he will catch up to you. That's how good Maru is. But that's what the difference is. Like They're both very good, but a teeny tiny slip up, like maybe losing a marine or two in the beginning of the game will harm the Terran player. But Maru will be able to keep them alive and eventually push out with a 16 marine drop like 15 seconds earlier, 20 seconds earlier. Which could potentially do a lot more damage and stuff like that is what makes it people that are like high level and low level GM better. Anyways, third base coming up for sort of metabolic boost on the way, double clean protection, and a factory on the way. Uthermal's not gonna switch it, he's probably gonna go for some Hellions, go for some harassment play. But the starport is on the way, the easily one of the most famous builds, the 1 1 1 build. But command center, he's finally done. He's getting the orbital command. I cannot stress this enough. There's a lot of low-level players that do not get orbital commands. Orbital commands are so good for you. I've explained in every single one of my videos. A mule gives you 300 minerals. The cost for the orbital command itself only costs 150. It pays for more than itself. Anyways, Hellions moving out for you thermal now let's see if they can do any damage to sort of but sort of has his queens ready so i don't think he's gonna get much damage done maybe a couple of drones but sort of pulls them away immediately two queens four lanes is more than enough to deal with two hellions only but still you thermal is producing more and more hellions and overlord is sniped off there an early marauders coming in that's kind of surprising maybe he's gonna go for some rush or push but is he gonna go for maybe he's gonna go for hellbats but i do not see an armory on the way a liberator is coming up for ha some harass i assume but the queens have now pushed away the hellions that were threatening to go into sort of third base more hellions are joining up with the squad and they're trying to see whatever they can find bailing nest coming in for sort of so that'll be good in dealing with any marines or hellions that are trying to force their way that's what i assume see Armory is coming up. The armory helps because that lets the Hellions transform the Hellbats. And Hellbats are a lot better than normal Hellions because they do a lot more damage. Something that I found very interesting is that Hellions are not able to be healed by Metabacks. But Hellbats can be healed for some strange reason. Doesn't make much sense. Doesn't make much sense. But I don't know. It's the way the game is operated. A lot of Hellions coming out of Uthermal, and he has that medevac with two Marauders and two Marines. Such a weird composition, but we'll see how it goes because 
he might be able to do some damage. Now the transport comes in. He's trying to go take down sort of, sort of, no, oh, sort of has a couple banelings out. So I think he should be able to handle this pretty safely. It depends on the splitting on how well sort of can or Euthromo can split his units. Very good split forces sort of to crash his banelings on only a couple of those hellbats, and now he's doing a lot of damage. But a couple more banelings coming, 14 more links on the way, and. He did no economic damage as of yet, and I don't know if this was really effective for Euthromo in the grand scheme of things. Let's see, the units lost. Resources lost. It's pretty even over there, I'd say. But... There was no economic damage done. Sort of still is on 53 drones to 38 workers for Euthermal. There is a huge differ differential. But mules are good. If you look at the income graphs, you can see how even though he's at such a lead, Euthermal still gets those spikes when those mules come in. Third CC coming on the way for Euthermal along with STEM, Marines, Tanks, Barracks, Double Engineering Bay, Double Engineering Bay, Double Evolution Chambers coming in for both both of the players. Some Hellbats. Ooh, he actually gets a cancel on the Fourth base sort of that's actually massive. The only three Hellbats sort of not have anything there. Or maybe he just didn't see it. He has a couple of lings and a band lings, but most of his queens did die to that attack. He has some idle workers and idle drones. Yep, there we go. He finally fixes that. But the roach one as well. I'd like him to build some roaches because that would help prevent these Hellions or Hellbats from doing more damage than they've already done. Plus one, plus one coming on for both players. And now he's gonna try finally clean up those Hellbats that were actually really annoying because they canceled his fourth base for quite a while probably a solid 20 to 30 seconds that his fourth base has been delayed he'd like to have had that sooner but good play by euthermal third base is now landed for euthermal surprisingly he's not making it into a planetary which is what i would have assumed he would have done but he's going for that orbital which is a risky play because lots of zerg players like to send in those ling run by and it's very easy to because there's three alleyways to attack from but I guess if you can get a couple sensor towers here or there, you can easily sense or see when they're coming in, so you can deflect them. But centrifugal hooks is now coming on the way for sort of as long, along with the hydrolyst that is just finished up. Layer is completed as well, and sort of crease, but it's actually pretty good. He actually has about almost half the map on his side covered. There's still this area that doesn't have much of it covered, but that's not much of a deal big deal but you throw mode now pushing in with a couple tanks and some marines i don't see any medevacs though is he gonna attack without medevacs i don't know if that's a smart choice but let's see if he's oh there you go Got a couple medevacs and some marines coming in as well pulling a couple of scvs or oh no, they're just mining i was gonna say it's kind of weird but you throw is gonna see if he can do any damage this hellbats are very low on hp this should be ki this should be taken care of pretty easily hydralis Wings and queens are now on the battlefield. He can almost scan and see what's in the area and he moves back. Very smart play for you throw more, just postures a little bit, forces some units out of sort of, and then just backs up. Now if you look at the worker count, it has evened up a lot. 70 to 61, but sort of still has more of an army supply. But then again, wings are pretty they're pretty squishy and they're easily to take out unless you have like a massive number of them and you can easily surround the Terran army. But sort of now going for plus two, plus two, along with Euthermal going plus two, plus two. He's got Groove Spines on the way as well. Infestation Pit, Infestation Pit is also on the way for sort of. And Euthermal loads up a meta back with Marines to potentially go for a drop. And sort of, it's just a lot of cream spread. He's going all the way to the left side and potential fifth base for Euthermal was almost under creep. That's very good scouting for sort of. We'll be able to see almost everything on the map. But now the thermal is finally pushing up. He has four tanks. He's got a couple of medevacs and you can see if he can cancel that fifth base. That fifth base is not going to live for sort of. He's gonna have to cancel that. And there you go, he canceled it. That's a smart thing for sort of because fighting up the ramp would probably would probably even lose because of all, the amount of siege tanks that Euthermal has. Plus two plus two is a little sooner for Euthermal. So if he attacks before plus two plus two finishes for sort of, he might be able to do a good amount of damage. He might be able to snipe this base of sort of and leave him crippled. 
both players actually no he's almost on three bases while Sora is on four but Zerg usually wants to be ahead in bases by at least one because if they're not it's pretty bad Spire on the way for sort of I'm assuming he's gonna try to transition into Brood Lords. Hive is also on the way. But Euthermo is pushing up one second. He's got more tanks and more marines. He's got one Hellbat. Just random Hellbat, I guess. Maybe it's arrived from earlier. But sort of is trying to go for that fifth base again. But if if Euthermo pushes up, I don't think that base is going to survive. And I don't think he should fight for that. These queens should also back up, otherwise he will lose them as well. He backs up the queens, but the fifth base is still under assault and he really should cancel that. But, yep, no cancel. He does not cancel that. But he does go for some damage, and he takes down the third base. I knew Thermal should have made that into a planetary, but now he goes in. Banelings are going in, trying to do as much damage to those marines as possible. But Euthermo easily target fires those Banelings down, and he smashes that army. What a crushing victory for Euthermo, and he snipes off the fourth base of Sword of. But now the reinforcements are coming on the way. There's no third base for Euthermo. There's no mining. It looks like he's going all in. He's no longer producing any more SCVs. Sort of comes in for the surround. He takes out Siege Tank. He's starting to take out these Marines. The medevacs are being targeted down. And Euthermo lost all of his army. And GG is called. Sort of is victorious. Great game by both of those players. I believe if maybe if Euthermo would have made that into a planetary. Sort of would not have been able, been able to kill that. And he still would have been mining up for three bases and he would have had a really good chance because Sort of had just started making his fourth base again and it was not even halfway built. And Euthermo had more Marines and a tank on the way. Maybe that tap out was a little premature, but Sort of did have Broodlords on the way and Euthermo had no idea it was coming and he would have been easily wiped out by it. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like what you saw, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.